be human-like and to have some kind of common sense and not just make blanket statements for the sake of hatred That's or right. sake of some other way. It shows that the intention is not good to begin with. Yeah. And then he said there is no message of salvation in the Quran <laughs> and no, no instructions on how to think morally. Well, there, there, we, there we have a lead-in. Yeah. So what is the, the, the message of, of, of redemption in the Quran? Yeah. It's a simple message, isn't it? Yeah. It, um, it's much more simple than, than a lot of the other books. Yeah, for example, I can ask you this. You, you are a Muslim now over a year. I can ask you this. What, what do you think is the redemption, uh, the redemptive quality of, of the Quran itself? It's, it's pure monotheism, pure monotheism. And, 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 and uh, the, the main uh, focus in, in a Muslim's life is to work on uh, consistent belief in, in God, uh, worship of God, and worship of one God. And not to get confused with with other forms of worship to other other people, other places, saints, statues, anything. So um, uh, Islam is a very clear religion in the sense that no, we don't worship saints. We do not pray in, 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 to any uh, prophets, although we revere them and we follow their message. You will never hear us saying uh, in Muhammad's name, peace be upon him. We do not pray the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We follow his message. We do not pray to the Prophet Moses uh, but we, we follow his message. We do not pray to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, but we follow his message. Um, so we love and revere all the prophets, but we realize that everything in the universe was created by God, including the prophets, including Prophet Jesus, the creation of God. So we don't pray to the creation, we pray to the Creator. That's the pure message of Islam, one, one God. So that la is the salvation. La ilaha illallah. So that is the yeah. salvation. So he's saying that there is no salvation. And the Quran is always talking about aminu wa aminu salihat. That you believe and you do good works. And if you do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter you into the gardens. I mean, what other salvation is that meaning to say that you believe in the oneness of the Creator? That's why Jesus said, Hear, O you Israel, Lord, your God is one. I mean, this is, this is a very beautiful statement by Jesus, peace be upon him, which is still intact in the Bible itself, and that is affirmed by the Quran, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say Allah is one. And why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say Allah is one, he could say, Qul huwa Allahu wahid, say Allah is one, wahid and ahad are, are similar in meaning, but Qul huwa Allahu ahad means that Allah is not only one, that he's unique, because you can be one of something. But you cannot be unique. And that's why he says, Laysa ka mithrihi shay, that there is, no, uh, there is nothing comparable unto him. So, uh, by, by this person saying that there is no salvation, and every almost every fifth line or tenth line or every page, that there is a, there is a call to salvation from Allah, that if you believe and do good works, that you will be sent uh, to paradise and that your sins will be forgiven. And then he says, No instruction how to think more. In Allah, you have al muhsirin. That Allah says, uh, verily that he loves the, the doers of good. I mean, and this is said so many times that the doers of good, the doers of good, Muhsineen from Ihsan, to do excellence. And not only just good, but actually go beyond being good itself. Mm -hmm. um, then he says, you are told what to think and when to think it. And you are threatened with punishment if you fail to comply. Mm -hmm. How does Allah tell what to think? He says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran. Don't you actually reflect on the Quran? Or is, are there locks on your hearts? Meaning to say that you have to think. Tadabbar, meaning to say that you have to reflect on the passages. You have, afala taqilun, don't you use your intellect? Afala yubsirun, don't you actually use your inner sight to come to the realization of, of knowing who is God and, who, and, and how to actually worship Him? I mean, this is to say that, oh, it's threatened with punishment. Obviously, I mean, to, to, for somebody who profess to believe in the Bible to say that, they, that they're not threatened with punishment, how else is the morality of the human being, mm -hmm. what, what, is the, what is the line of demarcation to say that somebody is threatened and somebody is actually uh, given the reward? I mean, to everyone, if everyone did bad and evil and good, and so if everyone went to paradise all at one time, where is the justice of God to begin with? So mm -hmm. there has to be some kind of deterrent. Mm -hmm. I mean, the police are out there. If you speed, they will stop you and give you a ticket. That is a deterrent that is a punishment true or not true true, true. yeah but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, God Almighty says that he's the most gracious most the, the oft forgiving right so with every punishment correct me if I'm wrong right. with every punishment in the Quran Allah also says if you come to me 
Yes. And 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 ask forgiveness. Yeah. That I am the most. I'm the off forgiving. Yeah. Even Masood actually said one of the companions. He said all the eight doors of of uh, of of Jannah. The from the eight doors, only one door actually never closes because somebody asks, how should I repent or should I not? He said one door does not ever close, and he said this is the door to repentance itself. That the angel always keeps it open until. Uh, the angel of death comes to you or the sun rises from the west. Meaning to say that the day of judgment has already started. So it's futile for you to ask after seeing the calamities already taking place for you to say, okay, forgive me now. So when the angel of death comes, it's futile for you to say, let me correct my life. Now is the time for you to correct your life. So it is not some, it's not a frivolous comment that is made. So th that angel keeps that door open always. And the other doors actually close and shut. According to Ibn Mas'ud was one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. And then he said, I have to ask why Islam appeals to you. This makes no sense to me. I mean, you, you're living in a democratic country. Why would you actually make a statement like this? I've seen many people say, why does Islam appeal to you? It's so disgusting. Look at the way they wear their beards. Look at the way they talk. Look at the way they walk. But millions of people are actually accepting Islam. It's the fastest growing way of life on, the, on, on this planet. And yet, for, for somebody to actually make a statement like this is very, very ostentatious to begin with. And he said, this makes no sense to me. I mean, you are not the author of, of all of the people. You're not the creator of all of these human beings. So if it makes sense to you, does it make sense to you? I'm sure that monopoly doesn't make sense to a lot of people. I'm sure that trigonometry doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But that doesn't mean that algebra is not used in, in calculations. So yeah, this you, is something yeah. absurd. You just mentioned something. And I yeah. just, it just struck me as kind of funny mm. in the sense that uh, just, just the beard, for instance. Right. You know, if we look at... God's creation, Allah's creation, and we look at the natural creation. Of course, the man is created with with a beard naturally. Mm. So actually, it's somewhat unnatural to to shave it off every day, right? Mm. And uh, also, all the prophets, you know, in, 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 in all the, the the Christian prophets, we would say the Muslim prophets, they all had beards, right? So when it's our belief, you know, when Jesus comes again, he's like, he he will likely have a beard. I would say. Now in our society, we, we're such an unnatural society now, we've created it, that when Jesus comes again, peace be upon him, it's highly likely that he'll be, uh, he'll be met with, with, with some people. Intrepidation. Wow. Mm. He, has, he, he, he looks, he has a beard and everything. Mm. So I mean, we have to be careful what we think of in our own, our own uh, belief system too. Because I, I just envisioned when Jesus comes, and, I, and obviously we don't know, but I just envisioned that he may quite possibly and probably highly likely have a beard. And what will we say? Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, that even in the pictures that you see now in churches, um, you will see that even though they paint Jesus as though he's, he's coming from London himself, yeah. Jesus in, in the Bible has, has, the, has the hair of wool, and, 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 uh, and his feet were the color of brass. Uh, I don't think that this is a typical color and the hair of a, of a normal European, but although they, they, they portray him as uh, blue eyes like you yeah. and white skin, I mean, this is not something that Jesus actually looked. Jesus was, oh, and, 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 and a nose that is befitting, uh, befitting a Londoner also. Not to say that London is a bad place yeah. or anything, but I'm just saying in terms of, in terms of Europe, uh, not to be uh, any distaste this tastefulness from our part to mm -hmm. the Londoners, that they're probably very good people. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are making the journey by yourself, he says, then I suggest you find a secular history of Muhammad, peace be upon him, he didn't say that, which strips away the, 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 the flowers and the pleasantries to expose a cult leader who advocated enabled rape, tortured his captives, executed whole tribes on the basis of his own paranoid suspicions, stole from all of the surrounding tribes and pronounced